It's Reverend Sean Ferguson for City on the Hill Ministries coming to you live from my study. Just wanted to come forth and break the bread of life and uh, just to preach a little bit and uh, give you what God has given me. Amen. And I hope uh, what I preach on and what I speak about uh, will help somebody to get a closer walk with the Lord. You may be facing things that you have never faced before and you're saying, Lord, where are you in this? Amen. Let me tell you, God is a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God far off. He's right there to meet your needs. Amen. So I just want to go to and get in the Word of God and just want to see what the Lord has for us. And uh, the title of my sermon is, You Must Be Born Again from Above. I, I preached a similar message to this, but it's this is just, it just, it, it's in me to preach the everlasting gospel. Amen. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you, God, that you would bless my lips to, a, to preach the infallible word of God. I pray that you would bless the ears to hear what the Spirit would have to say to them. Lord, use me as an oracle, a vessel, Lord, a messenger, Lord, for your people. Lord, we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names, and we thank you. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and go with our text. I'm going to go ahead and take it out of uh, St. John uh, 3 and starting at verse 1. It says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Amen. He was part of the Sanhedrin, and I'll get into that. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily or truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, You must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth, or where it wishes, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one, every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are thou not a master of Israel? Amen. He, he was, like I said, part of the Sanhedrin. He taught the Scriptures. And he says, And knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do not know, and we testify that we have seen. And you receive not our witness. Jesus said, "You, The Pharisees and the rulers do not receive our witness. Amen. I've testified who I am. I've testified of how you could be born again. He says, If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how? How shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Amen. They didn't believe his testimony. They didn't believe as a whole the nation of Israel and as a whole the Pharisees and the scribes. They didn't believe in the chief priests. They didn't believe the sin. They didn't believe uh, the, uh, the, the teachings of Christ and what he taught. Amen. And how if they didn't believe the earthly things, how could they believe the heavenly things Christ is saying? And he says, no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Talking about Christ. Even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not unto his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, 
But he that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And condemns means damnation. They're not damned already. But if you don't believe uh, in, in Christ and Him coming, uh, amen, and being born again, and, and Him being your Messiah, and Him being in your life, uh, amen, you you're, you are either on your way to heaven or your way on your way to hell. Those are who believe it, they are not into condemnation. They believe they have everlasting life, uh, and they have hope that that is in Jesus. And it says, and this is condemnation, Christ goes on, that the light has come into the world, and that's Christ. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Very explains itself. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Amen. And lest uh, his deeds should be made known, and lest uh, uh, he would repent of the wrong that he's done. Amen. And it says, uh, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, comes to Christ, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Hallelujah. Amen. If Nicodemus, a master and a teacher of the scribes and a Pharisee, a member of the Sanhedrin, the ruling body of Israel, knew he who he was talking to, the incarnation of God. Amen. He said, no man can do these miracles unless God be with him. Amen. This was more than a prophet. Christ was more than a teacher. He was more than a carpenter from Nazareth. Amen. He was the Son of God. He was God in the flesh. Amen. He is God incarnate. Amen. And if he only knew he was talking to, he was talking to his Messiah. Nicodemus addresses the Messiah as a mere man, a teacher. Jesus is both God and man. He was the Word of God. Amen. When God spoke the worlds into existence, it was the Word of God that created the worlds. Amen. And it says, Nicodemus, being a spiritual leader, yet did not understand what it meant to be born again. Sad truth is, he was religious. He learned the Torah, the Word of God, Yet he was ignorant and did not know the word of God. I mean, he knew the uh, he he didn't know the God of the Word. Worst of all, he was lost. Amen. He he knew the scriptures. He studied the scriptures. Amen. And there's a lot of people they go to church and they know the word. Amen. And, and they read the scriptures, but their heart has not been transformed. They have not been born again, born of the spirit, born from above. Amen. They haven't been regenerated. They haven't had their, their, they, their sins forgiven. They haven't had the blood of Christ, the atoning blood, blood of Christ cleanse them from all sin. Hallelujah. They haven't had that redemption power. Amen. And, 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 and the bur the salvation come into their heart, Amen. And and there he was religious. He was a spiritual leader. Uh, Nicodemus he knew uh, he studied the Torah. He knew the Word of God, but he did not know the God of the Word. Hallelujah, Amen. And worst of all, he was lost. The term "born again" means a spiritual birth, born from above, and it only comes through faith in Jesus. Uh, it only comes through faith of the finished work that Jesus did dying on the cross being the Lamb of God. Without Jesus, we are all guilty. Amen. We are all guilty regardless uh, of sin before the Father. Amen. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Christ is our only righteousness. Amen. Our righteousness is filthy rags. We must be born again and come to saving faith and salvation. We must repent of our sins. Say, God, I'm sorry. Amen. For all the sin and the wrong I've done. I'm sorry for how I broke your heart, Lord, and I'm seeking you, God. I'm seeking for a change in my life. Amen. I'm tired of the devil dragging me down. I'm tired of the sinful uh, chains of addiction that is destroying my life. Amen. I'm looking for you, Lord. I'm looking for help. Amen. I want my life transformed. Amen. I want these shackles gone. Amen. They've been holding me down. They're 
destroying my life. They're destroying my family. They're destroying my marriage. They're destroying, uh, amen, my prospects of a future, uh, of having hope. Uh, amen. Because without Christ, you're walking in condemnation. You're walking in darkness. Uh, amen. And you cannot come to God just any way you want to. Uh, amen. You must come to the Lord and say, Lord, repent of your sins. Forgive me a sinner. Come into my heart. Uh, amen. Transform me. I, I want you to be my Savior. Amen. And you must be born again, born from above. Uh, some people say, you, Jesus said, you must be born of the water and of the Spirit. Some people say the water represents the Spirit. Some people say that the water represents the natural birth. Uh, amen. Regardless of what it is, you must be born again. If you're going to ever go to heaven, you must be cleansed and have your uh, name written in the Lamb's Book of Life uh, and have your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. You must believe in the finished works of the cross that He did. For none of body is righteous and good enough in themselves to make it into heaven. Amen. You can take the most moral man, amen, that there is, amen, the one that doesn't cuss, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, amen, ain't cheating on his wife, ain't running around committing fornication. But unless that man is born again of the Spirit of God, he will never see heaven itself. Amen. It takes the blood ball to sacrifice that Christ did on the cross. Hallelujah. That cleanses from all sin. Amen. It's the only name under given unto heaven whereby a man can be saved. It's through Jesus Christ our Lord. Buddha cannot save you. Confucius cannot save you. Muhammad cannot save you. Amen. All the pagan gods of, uh, of Hindus. Amen. The 10,000 gods, they cannot save you. There's only one name that can save you. And it's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The King of kings. The Lord of lords. Lords. Hallelujah. The Prince of Life. Amen. All these gods of this world. Amen. They're false. Amen. Driven by the powers of demons. Amen. They will fail you. But I know one who's got a nail scarred hand. He took my place on Calvary. He died in my stead. Oh, he took the sins upon himself. The sins of the world. Amen. And he died on the cross. Amen. For my sins. Amen. And your sins and the sins of the world. That we don't have to live, amen, in condemnation and sin. He paid the price that no uh, no one else could pay. Amen. Gabriel could not die on the cross. Peter couldn't die on the cross. Moses couldn't pay the sin debt. All the thousands and millions and millions of lambs that were slain could not wash away a man's sins. They covered the stain and the stench of sin. Amen. For a year. But they had to go back. Back and do the same sacrifices, amen, the, with lambs, uh, amen, to do it, uh, to, uh, to cover the sin uh, of the world, uh, amen, just to cover it. But Christ, when he died, he was the Lamb of God, as John said, on the muddy banks of the Jordan River. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Christ Emmanuel, God with us, he left the splendor of heaven, became poor that we could be rich in the spirit. Spirit. Amen. Knew what it was to put on the body of a human. God became flesh. Amen. The Spirit of God moved upon the Virgin Mary. And the Holy Child that was conceived in her was Christ Jesus. Amen. The incarnation of God. Amen. And she born that baby, Jesus Christ. He left the throne of heaven. He emptied himself of the glory because he knew he was the only one that could pay for man's sin debt when Adam fell in the garden of Eden. Amen. When he took and ate of the forbidden fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. That's when sin entered into man's heart. Hey, that's when sin entered into all creation and corrupted it. Hey, but Jesus Christ came. The second Adam. The first Adam failed us. He let us down. Amen. He forsook God. He, he ate of the forbidden fruit and, and he let the devil deceive him. Amen. And there's many today. Hey, they think they're all right as long as they go to church. They think they're all right as long as they're uh, uh, not killing somebody or, or not into some bad wicked sin of drugs and alcoholism. They think they're all right. Amen. Let me tell you, unless you become born again, you are all uh, in love, I tell you, you're 
going to hell and going to split it wide open while you have breath in your lungs, while your heart is beating. Joshua said, choose you this day who you'll serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day you need to make up your mind. Many are in the valley of decision. Let me tell you, ain't you tired of the way the devil's been beating you? Ain't you tired of the way your life has fallen at the seams? The thief, the devil, he's a thief and a robber. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. He wants you in his heart for you to be born again. It's not God's pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked would turn from his wicked ways and live. Amen. Be born again in the Spirit of God and repent. Amen. And have their names written in the Lamb Book of Life. Amen. Jesus Christ loved you so much. I don't care if you're sticking a needle in your arm to get a quick fix, to get your mind off your problems. Let me tell you, when you come down off your high, it'll be there to face you again. The same way with alcoholism. Amen. Or any other sin. Amen. You may be running around with women to get a quick grit fit, a gratification to make your, your flesh feel good. But let me tell you, when you face yourself and you're all alone and you got to see the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. Amen. Don't you know the world will leave you high and dry? It'll tear you down, mess you up, bust you up, destroy everything that you build up in your life that was good. Amen. And the devil will turn around and mock you and laugh at you. Amen. When you listen to his lies. Amen. Let me tell you. Hey, the devil's a hard taskmaster. He's as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Some of you may be in his mouth already. And he's been chomping on your life. Chewing on you. Clawing at your soul. Amen. And he's wanting to devour you. Amen. But Jesus Christ has come. The lamb, the lion, the lamb of God gave his life on the cross to set you free from all chains and sins and addiction. Amen. That lamb became, when he rose again the third day, defeated both death, hell, and the grave. He became the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. He's coming back one day for his church. Amen. But why don't you let the lion of the tribe of Judah roar against that devil who's literally destroying your life. Amen. Who's literally chewing on your soul and got you in his teeth and he's about to completely devour you. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. We are not promised five minutes from now. Amen. If I could tell you to run to an altar of prayer. Amen. And seek the face of God. Amen. If I could only preach hell's flames hot enough. How it's eternal and heaven's bliss is forever. Amen. And it's never amen, going to lose any splendor or glory. Amen. The cheapest thing is there is transparent gold. But let me tell you, there's one that loved you enough that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Amen. And he's come to set you free. Amen. And if you're saved today, rejoice and praise the Lord and be thankful for the blood that was shed on Calvary's hill didn't come cheap. Amen. It cost the Son of God his life. Amen. And that blood still flows from Calvary's hill. It still runs in the dope houses. It still runs in the bars. It still runs in the brothels. It still runs in the streets. It still runs in the churches. It still runs on the job. Hallelujah! Because the Lamb of God is looking to save somebody from the clutches of sin. Somebody, amen, from the demons of hell. Somebody that the devil's about to completely devour their life and damn their soul. Hallelujah. And so we must be born again. Come to the saving faith that is in salvation in Christ. And ask Jesus into our heart and if we're going into our life if we're ever going to make it to heaven. You can't live any way you want to and make it into heaven. Let me tell you, you can't live a sinful life and live in sin and take the grace of God 
and say, well, it's once in grace, always in grace, I'm all right. Let me tell you, God will forgive. But if you willfully live in sin and you willfully do what you're doing, amen, let me tell you what, God is merciful. But God is no fool. You'll reap what you sow. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap condemnation or damnation. If you sow to the Spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. Hallelujah. Amen. Choose you this day who you'll serve. As for me and my house, will serve the Lord. Amen. St. John 1.14 says, The Word was made flesh, that's the incarnation of God, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. We beheld His deity. We beheld His Shekiah glory. Amen. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, that's Father Jehovah, full of grace and truth. John is saying, we beheld his glory. We seen him. We walked with him for three and a half years. Amen. I was witness of the transfiguration when the glory of God came around and he was transfigured right before us. Amen. His robes, uh, uh, all of a sudden he was glowing as bright as the sun. We seen him in his majesty. Hallelujah. We seen the shadow of the Shekiah glory overshadow him. We seen Moses and, and we seen Elijah come by and many minister to him. We witness some awesome things. We, we witness his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. But yet, uh, hallelujah. And he's full of grace and full of truth. Amen. God is a forgiving God. God is a gracious God. Amen. No wonder David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. St. John 10, I mean, St. John 14, 5 and 6, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where you go, and how can we know the way? How do we know the way where Christ is? Amen. How do we know uh, what it is to be born again, and, and how to make it into heaven? Jesus said this. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. You, uh, In order to be born again, in order to go to heaven, amen, you must come to God. You must come to the Son. Amen. I mean, you must come. He is God, but you must come to Him and be born again of the Spirit and ask Him into your life. Acts 4 and 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name uh, given unto heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved other than Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Amen. That's the only name, amen, that we can be saved, that we can be set free and forgiven. The chains can fall and be broken today. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is waiting for some of you to lift up your chains. Call on the name of Jesus. Ask Him into your heart and His Spirit will break the chains of addiction, will save your soul. He'll pull you right from from the very mouth of that devil that's trying to chew you up and destroy you. Amen. After a while, the devil's going to quit tired of playing with you and playing with your life. And he's going to destroy you. He's going to devour you. Amen. If you don't fall on your knees and say, Jesus, here I am. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Cleanse me, Lord. I want to be born again. I want a change. I want to be set free. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of the way the devil uses me as a puppet. Amen. The devil's a hard taskmaster. Amen. A wicked puppeteer. He'll make you do things you never thought you would do. Amen. Hallelujah. How many people have I seen in prison? Amen. If they had that one time to do it over again. Amen. But the devil pressed them too far and they gave in and they done something wicked and now they're in prison. How many people under the sound of my voice are in spiritual prison. Amen. Some of you uh, haven't been born again, haven't come to Christ uh, and committed your life unto Him, haven't got born again uh, and got your sins forgiven, been regenerated, been made a new creature, a new creation in God. Behold, all things are done away with and all, all things are made new. That old man is crucified, dead and buried, but we're alive and risen with Christ. We've been justified because He rose again victorious over death, hell, in the grave. Amen. Hallelujah. We need the Lord Jesus in our life more than ever. I say, Lord, help me open my heart unto you. And whatever, Lord, let my heart and my
my life be filled with Christ. Take this whole world and give me Jesus. Amen. Some of you haven't got victory because you're still holding on to sin. Amen. And you have to repent time after time after again for the same sins you've committed. Amen. Christ can set you free. I know there's times as newborn babes we walk and sometimes we falter and we fail. Amen. And you can have an advocate with Jesus Christ and say, Lord, forgive me and he will cleanse you and he's faithful and just to cleanse you from all sin. Hallelujah. If you confess your sins unto the Lord. Amen. And he says, uh, you are either on your way to heaven by being born again. You've either been born again and you're on your way to heaven. On your way, on your way, lovingly, I tell you this. And if I didn't love you, I would not tell you the truth because I love you and I stand as a watchman. Amen. I'm standing to guard your soul. I'm going to tell you the truth. You are either on your way to heaven by being born again or you're on the way to hell by living a life of sin, a life away from Christ. Amen. There is no shade of gray. Amen. There's no middle ground. You're either saved or you're lost. St. John 3, 36, uh, He that believeth on the Son, that's Christ, believes in the heart, uh, has everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's damnation. The wrath of God abideth on him. Amen. But if you believe and you get born again in the Spirit, you have everlasting life. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. You're on your way to heaven. Amen. The, uh, whether you would die today, amen, you're a winner either way because that same Spirit, if you are... If Christ lives in you, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. Amen. And you'll be transformed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When the Lord comes, we'll be ushered into his presence to be absent from the Lord is to be present with God. Amen. To be absent in this body is to be present with the Lord. Let me say that again. Amen. And St. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says, Enter ye the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Amen. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. The broad road to this world, amen, of sin, of homosexuality, of drunkenism, amen, of perversion, amen, of pornography, amen, of... of <clears throat> drinking and smoking and doing drugs and marijuana. Hallelujah. I'm going to call it out. Amen. And just living in perversion. Adultery. Fornication. Speaking like the world. Listening to the things of the world. Amen. Dressing not modest apparel. You know, you, if you claim to be a Christian... You are supposed to represent Christ. You are the ambassador. But how can you represent Christ if you're talking and cursing? How can you represent Christ if you're listening to worldly garbage? How can you represent Christ if you're going in the places the Lord would not go into? Amen. Let me tell you, it's a straight, it's a narrow way that leads to life everlasting. Hallelujah. Broad is the way. That leads to destruction. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and that's hell. And many there go thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow way is the way that leadeth unto life, that's everlasting life, that's that basically, that's heaven dwelling within you. That's the hope we have in Christ. Amen. That whether we die today or the Lord comes and calls us uh, out in the rapture or however it happens, we're changed. We have that hope in Jesus. Amen. And many there be that go thereat, but call straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, which is heaven, and few be there that find it. One day I read that and I prayed and God smote my heart and I prayed and I said, Lord, it says few be that find it. I had a weeping spirit come over me and the Lord spoke to me as I was praying. He said, one out of 10 professing Christians is truly born again. 
and my heart broke and I cried and I wept. I said, Lord, I said, are you saying 90% of the worldwide professing Christians are not truly born again? But he told me one out of 10 professing Christians are truly born again. That's a scary thing to think of. God told me that. Amen. Hell has no exit signs. There's no way out. It's eternal forever. It's outer darkness. It's torment. Cast out forever from the presence of God. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 9 says, There shall be the sinner without Christ. There shall be, and this is the sinner without Christ, punished with everlasting destruction. And that's hell. From the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. You say, well, why would a loving God ever send a person to hell? Well, good question. We send ourselves to hell when we go over the grace of God. When God follows you like, pursues you like a bloodhound, Christ does. And he keeps drawing you and trying to tell you you need to change your life. You're on that broad road that leads to destruction. There's detours on that broad road and it leads to the cross. But if you count his sacrifice as nothing that he did on the cross, and, and his loving kindness and the nail-scarred hands and a continually reaching out to you, and you continually push him away and say, I don't need God. I don't need Christ. I don't believe in God. Whether you believe in him or not, he's still real and he's still God. And if you die lost, if you die in your sins, Jesus said, where I am, you cannot come. And there's only one other place, and it's hell. It's a lake of fire. It's outer darkness. It's brimstone. There's no exit signs in hell. Mark 9.44, it says, Where their worm, and that represents the soul, dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. It never goes out. St. Mark 9.44, the scripture says the worm, or the maggot, does not die in the hellish flames. It symbolizes a lost soul in hell. The fire is never quenched. This imagery Jesus used in scripture on hell is synonymous with Gehenna, the lake of fire. It is the fate of the wicked, those who die lost without Christ. As he would have been preaching this, he would have looked across and seen the Hemen Valley, which was a Jewish, uh, in the Jewish text, was associated with evil. The Hinnom Valley lies southwest of Jerusalem. This is a place of constant burning garbage dump. It always burned garbage down in there. It's a place where they would burn criminals, a place of perpetual rot. Idolatrous Jews. He used it for child sacrifice to the altar to the pagan god Molech, a foul demon that the Amorites worshipped as God. So, Hidden Valley, Jesus has said, where the worm, where the maggot dies not, and the fire is never quenched. There's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. People will pray to die. Hell is one of the most praying places there ever was. Lord, if I could have one more chance. Lord, if you forgive me and, and give me a chance to pray, amen, I, I'll do whatever it takes, Lord. I'll tell my family, I, I'll, I'll, be, I, I, I'll be whatever you want me to be, God. Just give me a chance. It says the worm, the maggot, it never dies. The soul never dies in hell. You'll burn and burn and burn and burn and pray for relief and it will never come. You'll be outcast from the presence of God in outer darkness where demons will torment you day and night. Amen. It is the war. It's a literal lake of fire. Amen. And it, it represents the garbage dump of this world. Amen. The garbage dump of this world will take you to a place of perpetual rot in your life and it'll You'll end up in a place called hell if you don't come to Christ. If you don't repent of your sins and say, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. I profess you as my Lord and Savior and believe in your heart. Don't take it from a, this sinner's prayer. Amen. If it ain't mixed with faith from the heart, it's sending people to hell because people are leaving the same way they came. Yes, they say.
say a prayer, but their lips, but their lips, but their heart is far from Christ. They don't mean it until they like, go back and they live the same lifestyle. Amen. The, but they came in and they tried to get saved from, but they did not fully repent. They held back. They didn't fully commit their life to Christ. And the bliss of heaven is beyond anything a believer in Jesus Christ could ever imagine. Reunited, reunited with loved ones that died in the Lord. Rewards of service, uh, of being faithful. And Jesus said, because you've been faithful in just over a few things, I'll make you rulers over many. Amen. There, there's soul winners crowns. There's different crowns. There's different rewards of service. No more death. No more pain, no more disease, forever be healed, forever in the presence of God. Hallelujah. If that don't sound like a good place, let me tell you, you need to hit the altar and fall on your knees. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things the heavenly things, the rewards, the spiritual things, which God has prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah. Amen. One of these days, uh, amen, uh, it's, uh, weeping may endure for the night, uh, but joy is coming in the morning. You may have your heart broken, uh, amen, and you're trusting God, even though you don't understand what's going on and, and what you're going through. And it may seem like uh, uh, your faith is being tried, but if you'll fully trust in God and fully hold on to Him, uh, you may not understand what you're going through, but trust the Lord and in the power of His might and lean not to your own understanding. Uh, amen. Do not be weary and well doing. We'll reap a benefit. We'll reap a reward uh, if we faint not. Uh, amen. A lot of people are trying to make money and trying to make it a, a reward in this life for serving God. Uh, amen. Let me tell you, monetary value does not matter in the eyes of God. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. All these television evangelists are trying to rob God's people and want money. Uh, amen. Let me tell you, they'll face the Lord one day and they'll come up short. Amen. I'm telling you, amen. I want to hold on to God. Amen. I want to seek the face of God. I want to see God work in the, the Holy Ghost. Now, Lord, I say, give me, take this whole world and give me Jesus. I want to covet the gifts of God. I want to see the Lord move in the, amen, in the ministry. I want to see the Holy Ghost grant gifts in the church and in the ministry and in my life. I want to see doors open. Amen. This world, you can take the whole world. I'm just a stranger and a pilgrim passing through. I want to point somebody to Calvary. I want to see a soul born again of the Spirit, set free from sin. Amen. And no longer on their way to hell and destruction. Amen. To be forever from the presence of the Lord. But I want to see them brought free. Amen. And come to the cross and get their sins forgiven. Get their names written in the land book of life. Amen. And get justified and feel a new outcome and get the joy of the Lord in their heart. Amen. Some people have been so depressed. The devils want to steal your joy, you child of God. He wants to bring depression on you, but you need to rejoice in the Lord. And Paul said, I again rejoice. Amen. Let me tell you what. Amen. Why? Because you're more than... The devil wants to tell you you're a victim, but you're more than a conqueror. You're a victor. You're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you, you are, uh, uh, the Bible says, uh, you are made an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony and that we love not our lives unto death. Hallelujah. We are overcomers. We are not victims. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, we have been born again. We have heaven that dwells within us. Uh, amen. God, Christ Jesus dwells. His spirit dwells within us. The Holy Ghost. I say, Lord, fan the flames of the church. Uh, amen. Let us unite. Uh, and Lord, let us come together in one mind and one accord. Uh, let us have another day of Pentecost. Uh, amen. Let's see the fire of God uh, fall on people. Amen. Bring that sound of a mighty rushing wind and fill the body of believers, Lord.
Lord. And let us take this gospel beyond the four walls. Amen. And take the gospel beyond the church. And hit the street corners. Go to the, the uh, go to every place. To the highways and byways. And compel them and tell them of this goodness of God. Go out and get street preaching again. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you have lost your desire to serve God. I say Holy Ghost. Put a fan in their hand. And fan the flames. Let God burn. Let God arise. And their doubts and their enemies be scattered. Everything, Lord, and bring it to pass. Amen. Let them be fruitful and abound. For the Lord is looking for those. Amen. To be workers in the harvest. The harvest is ripe. And the labors are few. And they're being fewer and fewer. Amen. Just look, church. Look on the wheat fields. Look on them. They're, they're ripe. They're ready to be plucked. They're ready to be reaped. Amen. But no man can put his hand to the plow and look back. It's not fit for the kingdom of God. There's a change. We are all guilty before God. Adam's sin nature made us guilty. When Adam fell, we all fell in that transgression because through Adam we all have sinned. We have that sin nature. All is sin and comes short of the glory of God. But it's the goodness and the grace of the Holy Ghost conviction and the goodness of Christ and the love of the Father that brings us to the cross. Hallelujah. Romans 3 and 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5, 8 and 9, But God commended His love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Titus 3, 5, and 6, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, that's Christ's mercy, He saved us by washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through the Jesus Christ our Savior. He shed it abundantly at the cross. We are saved by the shed blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Being born again of the Spirit, born from above, born from heaven, hallelujah, amen, that a change being born of the Spirit, it transforms you, you become a new creation, hallelujah, the old things are done away with, behold, all things are made new, amen, I'm glad for that today, I'm glad we're no longer the men or women we used to be, amen, if you're a woman listening today, amen, and you're saved and you've been born again of the Spirit, amen, let me tell you, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. Old things are passed away. That old sinful lifestyle is passed away. It's been done away with. It's under the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It says... Uh, <clears throat> Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. God has given us a new slate. We've been born again. He's cast our sins as far as the east is from the west, never to be brought up in this life or the life to come. And all things are of God, who has both reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Amen. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Preach Christ and Him crucified. Preach being born again. The ministry of reconciliation. To reconcile man to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And it says to wit to, that God was in Christ reconciled the world unto Himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and which they have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are the ambassadors for Christ. And have through God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. Amen. Those who are lost today, be reconciled to God. Come to saving faith in Jesus Christ. Be set free. Amen. For the powers and the clutches of sin and evil. Amen. And from Satan and the dominion he has over your life. Amen. Christ can set you free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. And it says for he has made him, that's Jesus, 
to be sin for us uh, who knew no sin. He was the only perfect land, man uh, that never sinned. Amen. He was also God. He was he was man and he was God. Uh, amen. God in the flesh uh, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It's his righteousness that dwells. It's not self-righteousness. It's not self-righteous hypocrites better. I'm holier than thou people. Amen. But it's once you get born again in the spirit of God and you get regenerated and renewed in him and you become a new creation it's his righteousness that dwells in us that makes us anything when God looks upon us he sees the blood of his dear son amen and we have been adopted we've been grafted in into the vine where Israel was plucked out we've been grafted into the vine amen therefore we are sons and daughters unto God we've been made kings and priests unto God hallelujah peculiar people a holy nation amen that we should show forth the praises of him that has set us free and praise the Lord the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world thank God we are free from all condemnation hallelujah thank you Lord I'm not on my way to hell my name is written in the Lamb book of life and soon you're coming back for your church he's not coming back for a diseased harlot amen that sold out Christ amen he's coming back for a virtuous church a bride of Christ one who's holy one who's living uh, according to the word of God amen one who's professing and being obedient to the word of God one who's out working for Christ amen they ain't prostituted them the one the goodness of God out for the world and sold out God to bring in the world amen hallelujah but they stuck true to God through all the battle through the heartache through the hardships they have remained faithful. Hallelujah. And that's the one he's coming back. That's the bride of Christ he's coming for. Thank God I'm in the bride. Hallelujah. I don't want to be a foolish virgin. I don't want to slumber and sleep and not have enough oil in my lamp when the bridegroom comes and I go around and try to buy oil or try to get oil from those who have it. Amen. And we don't have enough to buy. The, fool, the wise virgin said we don't have enough for you and I. But while they went away to go by all the bridegroom came and they were left behind amen many people are slumbering sleeping spiritually and Christ is going to come and he's going to leave them as they lay hallelujah because they're not looking for Christ their soul is not right with God amen you can't flirt with sin amen and live like the world and think that you're going to be saved and set free when Christ comes and gets his church You'll be left behind to face the Antichrist, left behind to face what the world is going to have to go through. Hey, that tribulation and the great tribulation. Yes, you can still get your heart right, but if you can't serve God now, hey man, what makes you think you're going to be able to serve God when the tribulation comes? It says in Psalms 51, 10, 11. I don't know why God got me off on that. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. David, when he sinned, he knew what it was to come to God on brokenness. His heart was broken. He cried. Amen. He knew he did wrong. He tried to hide his sin, but there was an almighty eye that seen everything he done. And he saw Nathan the prophet to tell him, amen, there was one that had a, a hundred ewe lambs, I believe, or I may be wrong, amen, and, the, and, and there was one man who had one ewe lamb, and he come and he took it. Amen. And he, uh, uh, and he and he asked David what should be done. And David said, that man should be killed. And little Nathan pointed his finger and said, thou art the man. Amen. He killed Uriah. Had him sent to the front line. Amen. And and, uh, and he was sleeping with Bathsheba. And then he tried to get Uriah to, 
to, to go in and sleep with Bathsheba before he sent him on the front line. Amen. Because a child conceived in her uh, so it could be hidden. But he sent him to the front line. He committed murder. Uh, amen. He lied. Uh, and he uh, uh, committed sacrilege. Amen. And he paid. His child died. Amen. From that uh, 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 um, adulterous relationship that he had with Bathsheba. And he paid. And the nation of Israel paid. But he knew what it was to repent. He knew what it was to come back to God. Amen. And that's the way we got to be. If we make a mistake, if we make, if we sin, Lord, we got to come back on humble, humbleness. Humble yourself on the side, Lord, and he'll lift you up. Come broken and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry how I haven't lived a life according to scripture. I repent. And Lord, I want to live this day for you from now and forever. Amen. And Lord, I don't want to go nowhere, do nothing, unless you're with me, Lord. Satan wants to bind you from the truth, blind you from the truth. He wants to blind you. And those who are walking in darkness and in sin, he has blinded you. Hallelujah. Amen. But Jesus has come to save you from hell. He paid the price on Calvary. That he took our sins and nailed them to a cross. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. But if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Those who have not Christ. In whom the God of this world, and that's Satan, they call him the God of this world, the God of wickedness, the God of the world system, the God of the airborne disease, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest they should, lest the light of the glorious gospel, and it is a glorious gospel, of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them, unto them. For we preach not ourselves. I don't preach myself. My blood could do nothing for you. But Jesus Christ for the Lord. The, uh, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves your servants for his sake. We are your servants. Amen. We're not lords over sheep. Amen. We're not better than you. We're just trying to tell you and point you to the cross. We're trying to point you to heaven. We're, we're trying to see you get a better life and be born again of the Spirit. For God who has commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and God is wanting to shine the light of the gospel out of your darkness. Amen. For this reason. Amen. For God who has commanded his light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. He wants to shine in your heart. Amen. Though it may be dark now, but let the light of Christ come in to give you light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. He's knocking on your heart's door. Amen. He says, let me in. Amen. He's knocking on your heart's door, but you've got to open the door and let him in. He says, I'll come. I'll sup. I'll dine with you. and You can dine with me. I want to relationship. It's not enough to have religion. Religion will not save you. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. The Pharisees, they had religion. Amen. The ones that was that did Christ the harm and the ones that's always come between God and his people has been the religious. I'm talking about those who have been born again by the Spirit of God. Those who have their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Those who have the blood of Jesus Christ upon to their heart, amen, are living according to God's word. And we're not talking about the I'm better than you, holier than thou society, amen, who claims to have something that they don't have. Their lips, they praise God with their lips. Their heart is far from him. Jesus said, I see you, amen. He told the Pharisees, you're like a white washed sepulcher, amen, like a whitewashed tomb. You're pretty, you're beautiful on the inside, but in, I mean, the outside, let me say it again. You're, you're like a whitewashed tomb or a sepulcher. You're beautiful on the outside. Amen. But inside you're full of dead men's bones and all corruption and all manner of evil. Amen. And that's why the Pharisees and the chief priests hated Christ because he could see into their hearts and he knew what was in man. He knew what was in their minds. He knew what was in their hearts. He knew where they lived at. And he knows where you're living at. He knows your thoughts before you think them. He knows you better 
better than you'll ever know yourself. So why don't you just say, Lord, I surrender my heart, my life, my soul. Come into my heart, Lord. Forgive me. I repent. And Lord, save me and change me. Make me a new creation in God. For if the gospel be hid, it is hidden in them which are lost. And the God of this world, that Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto uh, them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Second, uh, I mean, Colossians 2 and 14, blotting out the handwritings of ordinances. That was against us. Our sins, our lifestyle, everything we did that was against God, against His Word, what we were guilty of, our shame, our disgrace. Amen. He blotted it out when He washed us and regenerated us by the blood of Jesus Christ. Blotting out the hymn right its ordinance that was against us. That was contrary, that was against us, which was contrary to us. That's our sins. He took it out of the way, nailing it to a cross. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ would have died, amen, if he just would have died for one person, amen, who's under the sound of my voice. I don't care if you're, uh, if you're into the occult, if you've been uh, uh, selling your body, uh, amen, for, uh, for means to live, amen, if you're, if you're shoving a needle in your arm, Christ Jesus would have died on the cross for you. He loves you more than you'll ever know. The devil will lie unto you, telling you God don't love you. God don't care about you. And he don't care about your circumstances. The Lord loved you so much he died on the cross for you. He paid the penalty of sin debt. Once paid in full. Hallelujah. That you don't have to live in that lifestyle anymore. Amen. You, son, you don't have to be a homosexual anymore. You don't have to be a transgender anymore. You don't have to be an alcoholic anymore. You don't have to be a lesbian anymore. Amen. You can be set free today. Hallelujah. You don't have to be a fornicator. You don't have to be an adulterer. You don't have to be a murderer. Whatever sin there is, there's no sin and shame and guilt that can power over the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sin. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Blotting out the sin. He didn't cover it up. The Lamb of God took away the sins of the world. He wasn't a, na a natural lamb, could only cover the stain of sin for a year. But Jesus Christ obliterated the power of darkness on the cross. He obliterated the power of death and hell when He rose from the grave and sat at the right hand of God. Amen. He stripped the devil who had the power of death. He stripped him of that power of death and hell. He took the sting of death for every man that we don't have to fear death when we die. Those who are saved and born again, amen, will be ushered into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Heaven is our home. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Amen. Let me go and read that. I'm afraid I'm going to misquote it. St. John chapter 14 and verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus was telling his disciples. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's coming soon, church, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. What I hope we have in Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Amen. I get excited. There's something that stirs in my soul when I talk about the goodness of God. When I talk about the grace of God. Amen. Because I know I'm unworthy of God's unmerited favor. Of His grace and His mercy. I'm unworthy. Oh, but thank God the blood of Christ cleanses us. Thank God when He rose again from death. Amen. And resurrected. He justified us in the eyes of God. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Oh, if you're saved today, you ought to praise Him right where you are and give God the glory.
glory. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. Not partial sin. All sin. Ephesians 2, 12 and 14, that at the time you were without Christ, one day we were without Christ, hallelujah, being aliens or foreigners from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, strangers from the covenant of promise of Abraham, strangers from the covenant of promise to Moses. Amen. We were without Christ, without hope, hallelujah. But one day a man called Christ Jesus, hallelujah, the Lamb of God, hallelujah, the one, the word of God, amen. Amen. Well, the second of the triune deity, he left the very threshold of heaven to be born of a woman. Hallelujah. As the Spirit of God moved upon her, he entered this world. Amen. Not as a kid, not, not in, a, in a house of regal, but in a manger he was born. Oh, he emptied himself of the glory to know what it is to be man, to know what it was to live the life of a man. He was tempted in all things, but yet without sin, he never gave it to it so he can secure us and strengthen us when we are tempted it's in Christ it's in Christ where your strength comes from amen child of God when you're tempted run to Christ he will strengthen you he will sustain you he will help you he will give you victory hallelujah but you've got to take up his cross deny yourself take up your cross and follow him hallelujah Oh, God. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians 2, 12 and 14. That wow. That at the time we were without Christ, being aliens or strangers from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope. Amen. I remember those days. Strung out on drugs. I remember those days running around trying to satisfy my flesh, running from woman to woman. I remember those days never being satisfied, my heart broken, a longing in my soul, a void in my life that could never be fixed. I remember those days looking to the stars telling God I wasn't raised in church, looking at the stars saying, Lord, I know my life would be better if I could find you. I didn't know nothing about Christ, but one day the glorious gospel came my way and he saved me and set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 and 12, I could get through this without crying and weeping. Uh, Ephesians 12 and 14, I'm sorry, that at time you were without Christ. Hallelujah. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope, hallelujah, and without God in this world. That was what my former life was. But since Christ has come and he dwells and he lives in me and I've been born again of the Spirit and he set me free from all condemnation, from the chains and shackles of sin, hallelujah, I've been set free. This is now what I say, hallelujah. I'm with the, this is but now in Christ Jesus you who are sometimes were afar off are made nigh or made close by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. He, when he died on the cross and said it is finished, amen, that, hallelujah, that temple veil that hid the Holy of Holies was ripped from top to bottom, about nine inches thick. That earthquake ripped it top to bottom, that whosoever will could come and get a drink of the fountains and waters of life freely. That whosoever will could get saved and born again. We could go ourselves and be ushered into the very uh, holy of holies of God. We don't need a high priest. Jesus Christ is our high priest. And we are all priests and ministers to God and kings and priests. Hallelujah. And we can just come boldly into the throne of grace. Find mercy and help and grace in a time of need. Hallelujah. We've been made close by the blood of Christ. We've been changed, born again, set free free, hallelujah, and been given a joy and a peace in our soul that you cannot tell because the 
the words are too few. Hallelujah. The webster has not come up with enough uh, a def- definitive word to tell about the goodness of God. Not truly what he's done in a believer's life. How he has set us free. You cannot tell all of the good things God has done for you. There's a song that says, There is a fountain filled with blood. I feel the Holy Ghost. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. All sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Sinners plunge beneath the flood. Lose all their guilty stains. Some of you have backslid on God. You walked away from this good Savior. You prayed to prodigal for a far fling in the far country. Hey man, you need to come home and get your heart right with God or you'll die lost and split hell wide open. But while God is dealing with you, why don't you come and pray and seek the goodness of God and ask the Lord into your heart again. Another song says, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What must you do to be saved? To repent of your sins and trust in the Lord as your Savior. Come to the cross. My last scripture is Romans. 10, 8. But what saith if the word of God is nigh unto thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart? That is the word of faith which we preach, which I preach unto you, the word of faith. That if thou shalt confess, this is all you got to do, but you got to believe it from the heart. Don't say it just from the lips. Believe from the heart. Amen. But, if the, but what saith that the, the word is nigh unto thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that there's a word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scriptures say, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You are not ashamed of Christ once you come to saving faith and the grace of God has touched your life. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. There's no difference between Gentile and, 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 uh, and, be, and, and between the Jew because of Christ. Amen. The, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon his name, that call upon him. For whosoever... That means anyone, whosoever, thank God I was a whosoever one day, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. Hallelujah. I've tried to tell somebody today, the Lord loves you more than you'll ever know. Yes, I had to tell you about hell. I told you about the glorious heaven. I told you about this glorious gospel and the change that Christ can do. He can break every chain in your life, yoke and bondage. Amen. But you've got to be willing to submit unto him. Willing to say, Lord, I repent, come into my heart. Amen. And I'm going to confess you before men. And I'm going to believe that you died on the cross for me, that you're my Savior. And I believe you rose again the third day. Amen. And you're alive forevermore. Let me tell you, he'll change your life if you'll commit your heart to him. Dear Heavenly Father, I preach my heart out to people. I got off work and I had a burden in my heart to tell somebody about this glorious gospel. I'm tired, but Lord, I want to be used by you. Lord, and I pray it'd be worth it all if one soul comes to Christ. Lord, I pray encourage the believer, Lord, that's that's fighting battles, Lord, and they need strength from on high, Lord. I pray for the backslidden son and daughter, Lord, that's that's left that's left from you, Lord, dear God, I pray that they come back to the arms of mercy. Lord, that they'll repent and come back home. 
Lord, I pray. I've done all I could. I, I preach my heart out to people. Amen. And I pray that this helped you. This is Reverend Sean Ferguson for City on the Hill Ministries. If you have, uh, if you would, I would appreciate if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel, City on the Hill Ministries, Reverend Sean Ferguson. God bless you. Jesus loves you. And so do I. Uh-uh. <sighs>